So team, keep it clean. Uh, oh man, we about to uh, get into another episode of questions from subs. Uh, and real quick, special shout out to the newest uh, team, keep it clean patrons. Kim, I know that's a uh, Ravens girl. Shout out to you and your husband. Appreciate the both of y'all supporting. Uh, and shout out to Christian and also uh, Dominique. Uh, appreciate y'all three uh, being team, keep it clean patrons. Um, but before we get into the questions, uh, obviously last night was crazy. Uh, I. I don't think I ever seen anything like that before. Uh, I was watching the game with my wife, um, and she was shocked too. She was shocked too, and I was. Uh, it was just. It was just crazy, man. It was. It was scary too because it's like, man, you just, you know, in football, like we see injuries all the time. We see. We done seen players breaking their legs. They break their arm, their shoulders. They got the ACLs, MC, all that type of stuff. But something like that, like last night, that's like super scary, man. And it, it, it was just different. Um, so for for Demar, uh, hopefully everything uh, is good with him. Um, I know they they did uh, say that it was it was a heart attack. They said it was a cardiac arrest. Um, just looking, I don't think. Um, yeah, we haven't seen anything as of right now. Anything else? It's eleven oh eight a.m. when I'm recording this. Uh, so for Demar Hamlin, yeah, hopefully he'll be straight. But I was um. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the NFL. Reason I say that is because we talk about it all the time that NFL is a business. We know it's a business. We know it's a nasty business too. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised that they stopped the game and they actually postponed the game. I was really surprised because we've seen times before when an ambulance has come out for a player and that ambulance takes the player to the local hospital or whatever and they say, all right, back to the game. Back to the game. We, we've seen it a lot of times. I know y'all have seen it. I've seen it. We've all seen it. Um, but last night was just different. It, it was different because they stopped the game. And I know we all heard about the, oh, the, the players, gonna, they got five minutes to get ready and go back out there. Um, but that got scrapped. And that I think and if NFL came out with a statement saying, oh, well, we didn't give the players five minutes. or so We weren't doing something like that. But anyway, um, I was surprised that they actually stopped the game. They canceled it. Well, not canceled, but postponed it. But either way, it was just um, it was different. Uh, Cause I was talking, I was I was texting one of my boys, and I was telling him like, oh, I, I said I, I know NFL. They're gonna try to do everything in their power not to cancel this game. I know they. I, I told them they should, but they 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 gonna do everything in their power not to cancel this game. So when they actually came out, and, and the, I think on the um, on the broadcast they were showing the Bills, um, the equipment team taking the stuff off. I was like, "Oh wow!" So they they are really actually like gonna stop this game. I was shocked, um, but yeah, man, it's a. It was just a, a, another reminder um, that these NFL players are humans too. We try to talk about that on here a lot um, because the, these NFL players they are people too. That's why we. Whenever we try to, whenever we talk about these NFL players, coaches, whatever, um, as much as we get frustrated with the outcome of this game or that game or that decision or this decision or whatnot, um, try to handle it with respect. Because these are people at the end of the day. They're people. Um, and, and this, like, is, it should never, in my opinion, um, it, it should never be anything personal. Um, when you're talking about something that you disagree with, don't like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, it should be handled professionally. Because, um, again, they're people. They're people that face real issues, that face real problems and whatnot outside of football. But this, in the case, it was inside of football. And it's tough. It was tough. So hopefully um, Hamlin is, is good. Hopefully even by the time y'all see this video, hopefully we'll, ha we'll have gotten an update that, that he's straight and he's good to go. Um, it is crazy because, like, this is like it's tough to compare it to a workplace situation, but because it's just a little different. Because we, I, I know I've seen it, and I'm sure plenty of y'all have seen it in the workplace too, where a, a medical emergency happens, and it's like everybody's looking, and it's crazy, and everything just stops, everything just pauses. But we're in the workplace, um, after the medical situation, after the person's like taken away, then everything ends up going back. You may have like a five, ten minute timeout or break or whatnot, but everything ends up going back to, to normal and, and, and work continues because um, that's, that's just how it goes. Uh, but again, last night was just very, very different. So hopefully, um, like I said, hopefully DeMar Hamlin is good um, and the next update that we get uh, will be a real positive one. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So 
team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from subs of course this is a series where you can ask any question you want to um and we answer in the video like this if you want to be a part of it for all the team keep it clean patrons you can send your question directly on patreon you don't need to send an email but for everybody else you send an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com do not send it anywhere else because it will not be a part of questions from subs and i am not doing any like i ain't doing any exceptions or nothing if you send it to the wrong email it's going in the trash straight up but anyway uh first question gotta say that with a smile uh first question came from my guy plex and appreciate you for being a team keep it clean patron he said uh my end of the bar thoughts you know we're going into week 18 of the 2022 season and we're having the same problems as we had week one of the 2020 season at this point it's like we're trying to mop the ocean with a broom uh what are we doing it's been three seasons you think we'd pivot and do something that would actually work i don't know they don't know I didn't have a problem with Gus only having three carries. JK was having a good game feed the hot hand. That's what we've been asking for. Uh, it was done. It's time we establish a feature back. I don't want a committee. I don't want evenly split reps when healthy. JK needs to be the guy. I get that part. Um, but it's nice to have a complimentary back. Um, and if JK ain't rolling, uh, well, I mean, he pretty much was for most of the game. Then they just... They just start like doing goofy stuff, man. Um, but it's nice to have them both because they complement each other. Um, and they're both capable of going off. Uh, but I, I do get what you're saying. And I do appreciate that, that about really est establishing a feature back, having somebody who's all right, it's him. That's our guy. Uh, but it, it is nice having both uh, to complement each other. But anyway. Um, he said, when healthy, JK needs to be the guy. Uh, what I'm going to say next is a piping hot take. Gus should be cut. Whoa. Uh, it has nothing to do with his talent, but rather his cap number. His cap hit is 5.6 mil. Uh, that's a high number for a backup running back. Cutting him would save 4.3 mil. Dead cap is 1.2 mil, but I'm willing to deal with it. It's time to defund the roster and allocate funds into positions that matter. No more giving the bag to role players. Gus, among others, Makari, Boyle, Chuck, Ricard, to name a few, would be unfortunate casualties. Oh, wow, you starting off this with a bang. Um, is that really his cap hit? I know his deal is worth like five something mil per year but is the cap hit that high too um because I I, I I don't know um but as far as uh i i see what you're i, I don't agree that gus should be cut um because it's nice to have both uh it's nice having both of them i i do see the vision that you're talking about uh as far as um he said, in allocating funds to positions that matter. No more giving the the bag to role players. Uh, well, see that that's where I, that part is like. Uh, it depends on exactly what their role is. Um, sometimes Ravens give money to guys based off of uh, emotional ties. It seems like, um, but not guys that impact. The, like look at um Nick Boyle, Nick Boyle. That because you listed him there. Um, what what does he do for the Ravens? With Nick Boyle, he's uh he's been kept on the roster, and it was seeming like, and I mean, it still seems like I guess next year, but it was seeming like after the draft, like uh oh, Nick Boyle's in trouble. Well, really, I thought it was gonna be Josh Oliver first, but Josh Oliver stood, stood stayed around. Um, I didn't really think Nick Boyle was gonna be here because they they already had Mark Andrews, they had Nick Boyle, they had Josh Oliver, then they went and drafted. Two tight ends So you have five tight ends I'm like ain't no way Ravens keeping no five tight ends On the roster But then I should have really thought about it Like these are the Ravens They they would keep 60 tight ends On the roster If they could um, But with Nick Boyle It's like He has a, a, a high cap hit But There's a lack of an impact And it's not even lack of It's not It's not only lack of impact But it's lack of actually Playing time too A lot of times He's inactive uh, His snaps are extremely low Especially for somebody that High of a A, a pay pay grade or whatever you want to call it um it's just it's really weird now pat ricard the ravens one thing like you can say a million things about pat ricard whether you wide receiver one as we all know um he's a fullback he's a running back he's a tight end he's everything to the ravens but uh with pat ricard ravens are they getting their money out of him they really are uh, because you may not like how they get their money out of him, but they are definitely getting their money's worth out of him because they use him a lot. 
they use Pat Ricard so much. Sometimes too much, but they use him a lot. So when it comes to the money versus the use, yeah, Pat Ric- they they getting it out of him. Um, you also mentioned Makari. Now nah, with Makari, uh, I, I think he's a good um, option to have because, especially, I mean, you look at Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie, now Ronnie Stanley getting a lot of money when he's out there, phenomenal. But a lot of times he ain't been out there, and there's been a lot of games where he's left. He's missed some games this year. But Pat McCary, he's somebody that can play every role on the offensive line. So his role as a role player is to fill in when somebody's out. Morgan Moses just went out this last game. Who stepped in? Pat McCary. And, and it's every time. And he can play every position on the offensive line. So he's, he's very valuable to the Ravens because, unfortunately, you do have injuries. Unfortunately, you have injuries to the offensive line. I mean, you have injuries to every position. But for somebody that can fill in five different positions, that's very valuable. So I would leave him off the list too. Um, Chuck Clark. I mean, Chuck Clark is a starter, but I think that his time uh, is coming to an end. I really thought it was going to be this past offseason. Um, uh, when they tra- they drafted Kyle Hamilton, I was thinking, oh, okay, yeah, all right, we see it. And they signed Marcus Williams, like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, we see it. But they said not yet. So um, I guess maybe this coming offseason, uh, Chuck will be out of here. So I see what you're saying as far as not paying role players, but I, I would only agree if – they don't play a role if they don't have a significant role because you're not only going to be playing starters you can't only pay starters the money the the money is going to go to different guys on the team as well but it's important that you allocate those funds the right way if guys have key roles okay they're going to get some money they're going to get like i guess mid-level money or whatever they're obviously not going to be top paid but they're going to get that mid-level money so, but it's just important that the Ravens give it to the right person. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean, patient. My guy Danny he said, man, Huntley really threw that pass to end the game. And he was about to yell at the wide receiver, LOL. Pro Bowl QB Huntley. Hey, yeah, hey. He's still a pro bowler. Next question came from a new team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Dominic, and, and I appreciate you, man. He said, I ain't great, just wanted to show some love to you. I really appreciate you being a part of my daily life, uh, whether I'm driving into work or drowning out the TV while playing Madden. <laughs> uh, your vids are my background, so thank you for all that you do. I appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate you, man. Uh, you, you play Madden on the Xbox? I might have, to, might have to dust it off, man. But anyway, he said, uh, so I have a thought. Do you think the unknown at offensive coordinator next season and lack of quality wide receivers plays or has played into Lamar's decision to sign or not sign a new deal? Or is it all about the money? We all know he wants to be the highest paid QB. Will he be? I'm not so sure. But if the Ravens brought in an OC that Lamar wants to work with, do you think he'd be willing to come down on guaranteed money if he thought he'd get some rings here? Uh, Or maybe even seeing the Ravens go after some serious offensive weapons for him in the draft or free agency. We all know Lamar Jackson wants wants and wants what he deserves. Uh, But are the Ravens the team to give it to him? Oof. Uh, what will it take to keep Lamar Jackson in the black and purple? Keep it clean, man, and I'm out. Appreciate that, man. Um, well, what will it take? Obviously, uh, a lot of money. Um, that will be first and foremost. But I think uh, I think for Lamar, it would be beyond the money. Um, it would be the vision of this team. Uh, what, what, what direction are they really headed in? Or is it going to be a lot of the same old stuff? Uh, we obviously know Lamar Jackson loves the Ravens, loves the team, loves the the the, the coach, a lot of the coaches and whatnot. Um, he just he 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 loves it, loves the fans, um, and I mean that's clear as day. We see that all the time. Um, but I, I I do think it would it would be more than money. Um, all right, hey, how, how's this offense gonna be? Are y'all not only gonna invest in me financially, but are you going to invest in me as far as with weapons and stuff too, uh, with the scheme? How are you going to how are you going to fix this offense? Because there's obviously issues, there's problems. How are you going to fix it? Like so when you think about it, when you think about that interview that Lamar did with Rich Eisen two years ago, I think it was two years ago, right? Uh, where he said that the the teams are calling out our plays. Like think about that. Like when you think about that. In retrospect, it's like, man, the starting quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens spoke on it publicly that other teams were calling out their plays. And this is the same offensive quarter coordinator. I just said offensive quarter. But this is the same offensive coordinator that the Ravens still have. 
still have and 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 they've been having these issues and they are very predictable like not and and Lamar like not only were the defense is calling out the Ravens plays we were at home too us, us people sitting at the end of the bar we were calling out the plays we've been calling out the plays too a lot of time we know what's going on um but it's just that's that's something to think about so um yeah it, I definitely would think that it goes beyond money um, and I just think it's about the future. And next question also came from a newer team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy, uh, Matthias. He said, yo, what's good? And Graven, first off, just wanted to say thank you for the videos. Uh, they're super insightful and they're always well done. <laughs> I don't know if they're super insightful because we don't know nothing, but I, I appreciate you watching them, Matthias. And he said, um, I, I was wondering if you've seen film on Quentin Johnson from TCU. Or Johnston, excuse me. Uh, you said we should draft someone who's that guy, and I think he might be him. He's 6'4 and a monster on the field. He plays just like a Raven, in my opinion, and wanted to know your thoughts. Keep up the good videos, and I hope you and the wife and kids are good. Appreciate it, man. Or should I say Matthias? Is it Matthias or Matthias? Let, you, you let me know, because I know I'll be messing up some names. Um, so my apologies in advance. But um, you know what's funny? I was literally, uh, we, because we went on a little vacation um this past weekend uh because when they when they said that the ravens game was gonna be sunday night instead of sunday afternoon i said Ooh, okay we can take a little vacation all right let's go but anyway um while we were on vacation we were getting ready to um we getting ready to go out me and my wife and carter we were getting ready to leave the hotel and uh, and, and shout out to uh tory smith and chanel they were they were at the same hotel that we was at um but we were getting ready to leave and um we were, oh, I was watching the game. I was watching. Uh, it was TCU and not L TC. Who were they? Play? Michigan was it TCU? Michigan? I think that was it. But um, y'all know I don't. I don't really watch college like that. But I did see the, the seventy-four yard catch and run. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was the same guy, uh, Johnston, uh, Quentin Johnston, um, because he he caught the ball and then. He made that one defender miss, and that was it. He took it to the house. Uh, and, yeah, he's 6'4". They were talking. I forgot what they said. He runs in the 40. But they were like, hey, you, you, they they not catching him. They ain't catching him in the open field. And I was thinking, like, oh, yeah, that, that, that look nice. That look good. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, this offseason, because, you know, we're going to obviously be talking about wide receivers more. Uh, this offseason, I'll try to look at some more stuff on him. But from what I saw in that game, uh, he fit the bill. Next question came from my guy, another team keep it clean patron, my guy Jason E. G. He said, This is my rant. I'm highly disappointed in the Ravens front office. They have allowed far too much noise and influence in their house, and I realize what this truly all culminates to. Uh, the Ravens have never had to live the life of managing and negotiating with a true star player. Uh, for those that remember when Ray Lewis hit the free agency window, the market wasn't kind to him. Ed Reed and Terrell Suggs had given their best years to Baltimore before moving on. So as it goes with Lamar, I charge Bashadi and DaCosta with how this has gone this far. Agent or no agent, his value is undeniable. The Ravens can't cheap their way around this. Literally every QB that got paid this year equals garbage. The leverage game has been lost by the front office. And now with things like uh, the one 180 degree reports from Mike Preston, uh, the Ravens are navigating in an unfamiliar space. Their own history documents how doing wrong by winning QBs comes back to bite them. Dilfer. Uh, Flacco became an anomaly because he was paid due to real time service rendered. I honestly think the end game is Lamar gets paid to stay for the long haul. But the Ravens front office has no true experience in dealing with a bona fide star player. And it's showing. Maybe if Ozzy was still in the driver's seat, uh, we wouldn't be here. I don't know. I, I can't say that last part with Ozzy News. I, 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 can't, I can't say that last part. I remember um, Lynetta had asked about that same thing uh, in a previous episode. If Ozzy would have got the Lamar Jackson deal done by now. Um, but I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll never know. Um, now, you said when, when Ray Lewis hit. The uh, when Ray Lewis hit the his free agency window, the market wasn't kind to him. I don't remember, cause I, I don't remember what it was. Cause I remember I, I was scared that he was gonna go to Dallas. I was scared that he was gonna go to Dallas or Denver. I, I, I was frightened when he became a free agent, but he ended up returning to the Ravens. So, like, oh, whew. I was I was scared. I was scared. Um, so, so I don't know. Um, but th this is that first, this is this, his first deal, Lamar's first deal. Um, and yeah, he is a different type of. Enigma. He is a different type of star, um, and he's at the quarterback position. I think that's what makes it so different. 
because it's at the quarterback position. Like, they've had star players at different positions. Like, obviously, Ray Lewis, he's a linebacker. Ed Reed, a safety. Ray Rice was running back. Terrell Suggs, outside linebacker. So, they've had star players at other positions, but at quarterback, it's been different. Because Joe Flacco, he wasn't a star like this. I mean, he was known around the league or whatever, but he wasn't like a, a star like Lamar. So this is like way different. It's way different. And then um, just how much attention Lamar brings to the Ravens is way different. So, yeah, you're right. This is definitely unfamiliar territory with the Ravens. The last question on this patrons only episode of questions from subs came from my guy, Harry. I uh, said, I wish I was starting off this year right into you saying how brilliant we played and how Greg Roman was in. What? In Gen Gen oh, I don't even know what that word is. Ingenuitive with his play calling John Harbaugh can outcoach Anyway or I think he meant anybody And our defense is dominant Instead I'm writing how Steve Bishotti needs to clean house Again I honestly wish I worked For the Ravens because it doesn't seem like you can Get fired for job performance And you, <laughs> and you just uh, You just get let go when your contract Is up and they just decide not to renew it Harbaugh was out coached Roman offense was Vanilla and now I just want to hear What the Steve Bishotti plan to do about it I don't think you're going to hear anything about That um, not publicly at least But anyway He said I have been a Ravens fan Since they got awarded the team Back in 96 from the Browns Until then I was cheering for the Baltimore Stallions CFL team I remember when they had the contest On what the team name was going to be Because we didn't want to do uh, The Cleveland fans What Israel did to us When he moved the Colts to Indy I'm just saying all of this to say For the first time I don't have faith in the Ravens As an organization uh, We have had worse seasons But we have always had direction We don't have direction right now Sorry for the long rant But I just needed to get all of this out I really don't have a question Except to ask What is our direction? Because it's obvious that the fans want Lamar And the organization wants Harbaugh These two things can no longer coexist Sincerely frustrated fan That's a deep question right there um, what, what is the direction? Uh, of the Baltimore Ravens um, And I think that's a fair question too um, Because a lot, So many Ravens fans are thinking past This season um, because they're wondering Like what's going to happen next What's, what's it going to be um, You have obviously You have all these pending free agents You got Roquan Smith uh, you got Marcus Peters. Uh, could Calais Campbell end up calling it quits? Could Justin Houston uh, end up calling it quits? Uh, what's going to happen with them? Um, but obviously the biggest question mark uh, is Lamar Jackson. That's the biggest question mark with the Baltimore Ravens moving forward. What's going to happen with him? And there's, since there's so much unknown, then it's like, oh. Then, of course, with Greg Roman, that's another question mark. Uh, a lot of us, we, I mean, none of us know what's going to happen with him either. Uh, because again, he contract could expire. He could be gone. He could be fired. Blah blah blah. But at the same time, he could end up getting an extension. Because Ravens like doing these swears with stuff like so. We we just don't know. So I think since so much stuff is literally up in the air right now, then that's that's why the question was asked: What is the direction of the Baltimore Ravens? Shout out to Graven.